So as per usual, I know a lot of you guys are really struggling to level up weapons quickly in Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone, so therefore I've got a bunch of different methods for you guys to make sure you get to max weapon level for each of your weapons in under 20 to 30 minutes. Really, really easy for both Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone Season 5. Be sure to leave a like if you find this guide helpful so that other people can find it too. I'll also have timestamps in the description if you want to jump to a specific part of the video. But without further ado, let's dive straight into these fast weapon XP methods. So we're going to start with MW2 multiplayer, then we'll talk about Warzone Battle Royale and then DMZ and finally some kind of weapon XP boosts overall. So the first thing to note for Modern 2 is that it's always important to have a good class setup and that's just because a lot of the different things in the class setup will actually secretly give you a weapon XP boost which a lot of people aren't aware of. So let's quickly talk about that now. So you make sure you have the best class and you're getting more XP than other people. So the first thing is for the perks. Make sure you've got on extra tactical and then scavenger or tracker. The extra tactical I'll explain in a minute. The scavenger so you can resupply ammo from dead players and the tracker just so you can see enemy footprint trails the second two are up to you but extra tactical is required in tier two make sure you've got on fast hands so you can reload your weapon faster and in tier three make sure you put on overclock so you can earn your field upgrade faster again we'll explain in just a second why that's so important then for the tactical equipment you want to put on decoy grenades and this is because they actually count towards your weapon xp and so basically we put on extra tactical so you get more of the decoy grenades so you can get more weapon xp and the overclock is for your field upgrade which we'll explain in just a second but for the lethal equipment you want to put on something like a semtex because that will help towards weapon XP as well. And for field upgrades, you want to put on the DDoS. It's better than other ones as you can activate it quite fast. It recharges quickly. It's easy to use and you can use your weapon while you've got it activated. So basically, the meter will fill up when you're closer and closer to people. You can get up to quite a few hundred XP each time you're using this. So it's really, really useful. And because DDoS is so good, it's important to have overclock on so we can earn DDoS faster, hence why we've got that perk on. And then finally, you also want to make sure you've got score streaks rather than kill streaks. And ideally, I'd go for UAV, counter UAV, and then another option such as a sentry turret or a VTOL, something like that. That's it for the class setup, but what game modes would I recommend? Well, it needs to be a close quarters mosh pit mode for season five, and are currently the ones in the game are ones like Puntamar and Strike, they're the new Season 5 6v6 maps. Again, they're not great, they're okay, they're not the best, but currently there's also shipment in the game for the time being. If that goes, you'll have to go for something else, whether that's Puntamar, Strike, or another kind of close quarters mosh pit. Sometimes they've got a mix of other modes and maps, you know, like Farm 18, Shoot House, all those other kind of close quarters maps. So something like that, whatever's around, just use that. Shipment obviously is the best if you can get into it. But the thing is, whatever mode you're playing, even if it's shipment, people just run around and think that doing that will get them a lot of weapon XP. And it will get them some, but it won't get them as much as they can get. So let's look at what you need to do to actually level up your weapons fast. Now, of course, getting kills is an important part of weapon XP. So do push for as many kills as you can. You know, aim down sight before going around corners, take cover, push into enemy spawns, flank around the edge of the map, that kind of thing. But that's not the only thing you need to do. So let's talk about what else you can do in multiplayer to boost your XP really easily. So the first thing is use your decoy grenades, like we talked about earlier. So when you spawn in, throw your decoy grenades. If you put on extra tactical, you're going to have three of them every Every time you spawn in we can talk about shipment but you can do this on any map you want i'll throw one in the left lane one in the center and then one in the right lane just to cover as much ground as you can obviously if there's lots of enemies in one area and you know they're there for example they're on an objective or something then obviously you can direct them that way just try and spread them out as much as you can to increase your chances of getting decoy assists so basically every time you throw them you'll get decoy assists if one of your teammates kills an enemy and they've died near to your decoy grenade so that'll count as a decoy assist so obviously the more decoy grenades you throw the more assists you get and therefore the more weapon xp popping up normally it's up to about 260 xp per spawn from three decoy grenades obviously it's more if you're on shipment less than that if you're on other maps but you know it, it varies so just throw it as much as you can and you'll increase the amount you get this alone will get you many thousands of weapon xp by the end of the game so really really important but then you also want to keep rushing around and getting kills and then when your ddos field upgrade is charged make sure you're using that the meter will fill up black with at least one bar to show that devices are in range the more devices there are the more bars are filled up you obviously want to activate it when there's more bars but obviously if you can't see any then just activate it as soon as it's around at least one device and that will give you at least I'd say 60 to 100 XP if not more per use and this recharges very quickly like I say thanks to your overclock perk and fast base recharge time so you can call this in many many times throughout the match and it's very easy to use it takes a, around a second to activate you can still shoot your weapon if there's enemies nearby while you're using it and it's better than other ones like the smoke airdrop because even though that has a slightly higher XP rate those have a slower recharge time so it takes ages to use whereas the DDoS you can keep calling in again and again and again so and there's no risk of you dying because you're not pulling up a screen that's blocking your vision as well so that's really important finally go for the objective as much as you can as this will get you more xp too 
so make sure you have the weapon you want to level up in your hand and the objective is going to vary so for example if you're playing kill confirmed collect as many dog tags as you can if you're playing domination capture the dom flags or you can sit on them and shoot enemies that will count as defense points or you can kill enemies that are sitting on the dom flags and that will count as you know sort of capturing points similarly you can do the same kind of thing for hard points so you can either capture the hard point or defend the team's hard point or attack enemies on their hard point and that will get you all more xp than just getting normal kills so it's really important to go for the objective if you can the best game mode i would say at the moment is probably still something like grind if you can get into it and the best combination is grind on shipment so grind is kind of like kill confirmed but you've got lots of tags rather than just one per death so sometimes you can pick up tags from other enemies and then you can literally be carrying like 10 15 tags or whatever and then if someone kills you you drop all those tags and someone else can pick them up and it keeps getting transferred so you can get loads and loads of xp each time you pick up all those tags but the other thing is each of those tags need to be banked so if you can pick up all those tags and then go to a bank there'll be bank a and bank b you can either dive onto it quickly to deposit them more quickly or you can sort of walk or run onto it and that will help you deposit the tags it will slowly deposit them and you'll get xp for that too so it's important to pick up the tags and to bank them and you get hundreds and hundreds of xp if not thousands for playing grind so ideally grind but any of the other modes are good too the last thing that you, you need to make sure you're doing in any match is as well as getting kills make sure you're using your weapons to destroy enemy equipment enemy field upgrades and enemy kill streaks as this will adds up too so if you see any enemy equipment of any kind shoot them with your weapon you want to level up and that will get your xp as well and the last thing is make sure you're going for more exciting kills so instead of just getting normal kills make sure you're getting things like headshots if you can long shots bloodthirsties rapid rapid kills all those kind of more exciting kills will get you medals and you get more xp than just a standard kill so make sure you're going for those two not all the time don't get out of your way but if you can it's always great so that's kind of my main sort of advice but if you can't play that what else would i recommend well there's always hardcore enemies have less health so they die more easily so it's easy to get lots of kills and rack them up fast with you know lots of weapon xp so hardcore is good if you can get into a good mode other objective modes might include domination hardpoint those kind of ones if you want to play that Again, going for the objective a lot while you're getting kills really, really helps. Ideally, like I say, you want to be playing mosh pits like shoot house, shipment, whatever it might be. That's good. Sometimes, occasionally, they can be combined with hardcore. So recently, we had hardcore shipment. That was great because you had shipment and hardcore. So if you can go for that, absolutely fantastic. There are other modes too. So for example, you might want to play invasion. Just if you are, make sure you keep your ammo topped up. You know, make sure you're going to ammo reserves using scavenger, your munitions box, that kind of thing. I recommend going into and getting near sort of enemy spawns. You'll get allow you to get more kills and maybe either flank around the edge of the map to get there or use vehicles and once you're in or near enemy spawns you can perhaps place attack insertion it will allow you to respawn and then you can keep getting kills there even if you die but i'd also recommend exploiting opportunities to get lots of enemy kills so for example in spawns you know shooting enemy ai deploying from helicopters that kind of thing because they'll periodically come and spawn you can obviously play things like ground war 2 that's kind of my main advice the last thing i would say is that for more difficult weapons there is a slight different strategy so if you want to level up for example a combat knife or any of the melee weapons or any of the launchers or like a riot shield or something like that then you might want to try a different strategy so what i'd recommend is instead of going for all the weapon xp in one go trying to level up straight away you can do that of course and that's absolutely fine with the methods i've recommended but it might be a little bit more difficult so what i recommend is trying to level them up more passively so keep your secondary weapon on you and you know use your primary weapon to get the kills and do whatever and then if you're playing for example an objective mode switch to your secondary weapon that's more difficult to level up when you're going to do the objective so if it's kill confirmed switch to your more difficult weapon when you're going to collect the tag if it's domination switch to it when you're going to capture the flag that kind of thing and that will let you allow you to get lots of passive weapon xp because you get it just for doing those objectives but you don't have to get any kills so it's easy to do it and the more you swap to it you know the quicker you can level them up but it's good rather than trying to rush to do it all in one go when it's very difficult and complicated and it, it just makes it a lot less fun so try and do it slowly rather than trying to rush for it all in one go but if you want to obviously the option is still there to do it so that's everything from modifier 2 let's talk about warzone 2 battle royale and also dmz and then finally we'll talk about the weapon xp boosts overall and these have changed a bit since last season so you might want to listen into this so the first thing for battle royale is what kind of mode could i recommend well well, there's lots of different modes at the moment plunder is gone but plunder is very good we'll talk about that in a minute there's also you know modes at the moment like vondal lockdown or resurgence modes that kind of thing so whatever mode you choose up to you ideally i would say either plunder or vondal lockdown or if there's nothing else then go for whatever there's there might be a new mode this season there's going to be limited time events like armored royale and the call of duty 2023 reveal event so those are both likely going to have lots of xp so if they're around obviously go for those if not plunder or vondal lockdown 
So first we'll talk about Vondel Lockdown and then we'll talk about the other modes. So for Vondel Lockdown, which is around right now, it's kind of got, I think, about eight different zones. It's kind of like Hardpoint from multiplayer, but obviously it's in Battle Royale. The zones will go inactive and then active. When they're active, they're active for about two minutes and you want to get as many of your teammates as you can onto your zone because you get about 30 XP every few seconds, but every additional person gets another 20 XP bonus. Every few seconds, it will be 30 XP by yourself, then 50 XP with a teammate, then 70 XP with another teammate and so on. And this is every few seconds so it racks up really really fast you want to try and go to zones that are not super busy but not ideally super empty well you can go to super empty ones which is fine because the main point of the mode is just to capture the zones so make sure you're trying to stay on them as long as you can and don't die but obviously if you can find enemies at the same time to get kills then that's great go for that as well every now and then you get high value zones try and go to these if you can if there's no one around because they get you more xp but if you can't that's absolutely fine standard zones are fine and then towards the end of the game you will get high value zones you'll get more high value zones and therefore it's easier to do it so you do get a bonus towards the end of the game but yeah just keep capturing those get kills when you can fairly simple not really much else to say for that that's Vondel lockdown the other thing you can do is kind of resurgence or plunder or normal battle routes up to you guys and with all of those i'd say the best thing to do is make sure you got your weapon obviously you want to level up now if you're playing battle royale obviously you'd have to pick you'd have to get it like as floor loot or buy a loadout or whatever which can be a bit annoying similar for resurgence so ideally not those but if you're playing something like plunder where you can get your loadout or any other kind of limited time mode like that that's great because what you want to do is mainly focus on contracts there's a couple of contracts you want to focus on there's safe cracker intel and there's most wanted contracts now safe cracker obviously as you guys know you have to start the contract there's three different saves to open when you open one you'll detonate it with c4 to open the door don't get too close or you'll take explosion damage and then you want to try to get between the saves quickly with a helicopter or an atv quad bike or some kind of vehicle keep opening those they're good because they'll get you sort of cash but also XP and so on as well. The other main contract is Intel. So you start a contract and then you head straight to a computer terminal to upload the Intel. There's quite a few of these on the map. They're fairly easy to do and they get you a decent amount of XP. So try and go for these if you can. They're probably the best ones. And again, try and go between these quickly with, you know, vehicles. To be honest, I actually lied. The best contract in the game is Most Wanted, but they're still unfortunately not in the game. I think it's because they were bugged before. So unfortunately they're not around. But basically if these come back, what you need to do is you need to survive between three to four minutes and that will give you like 5,000 weapon XP. But you can reduce the time by getting yourself or your teammates to open loot boxes. Every time you open a loot box, it'll take 10 seconds off the timer. So if you open six loot boxes, which is not that difficult to do, then that will instantly knock a minute off the time. Obviously, it'll mark you as a most wanted player, but the quicker you kind of run down the time and you open these loot boxes, the easier, easier it'll be. So basically try and open as many loot boxes as you can, which will not only get you more XP, but it will also help to run down the time. And when you finish, you get 5,000 XP, really, really easy, but they were bugged. But if they come back, that I would definitely recommend going for those over any of the other the ones if not then intel and if not then perhaps you know save cracker or there's also bounty ones but the thing is like is a bit more variable so if you want to go for those and you're good with those that's fine sometimes if you know you're not going to be able to do a contract for a while it's worth picking up a bounty anyway because quite often someone else will come along and kill your target or they'll die and then if, therefore it'll say bounty poach and you'll get some money and xp even though you didn't kill them because you had a bounty on them and then they died you still get rewarded so it's worth if you're not going to do a contract pick up a bounty and someone else might be able to do your job for you which is really really great like i say keep using vehicles to complete contracts as fast as you can and try to land on a quieter area of the map away from the flight path to do them so you're less likely to be disturbed make sure you're also trying to get kills as well so try and get them along the way if you can keep out your weapon you're going to want to level up because you'll get passive xp just for being in the match with it and looting as well will also get your weapon xp so you know opening loot boxes picking up loot from you know unexplored rooms that kind of thing and dead enemy players that will all count and get you xp so make sure you're using the weapon that you want to level up even if it's just in your hand and that will help you level it up faster the last thing i'd say is that you get a small amount of additional xp for buying items from the store so make sure you collect cash you know from business buildings like shops gas stations that kind of thing airport and cash register are quite good for finding cash as well or shelves in most buildings or on roofs whatever unexplored places will have a lot of cash in it basically what you want to do is collect all that cash and then if you're near a buy station make sure you just buy a bunch of items from the buy station it's easier to buy lower value items so for example armor plates or something like that and if you buy lots of them that will give you a small amount of xp and that will add up again to help just boost the amount of weapon xp overall that you get so make sure you do that if you get a chance and i'd say the last main thing is just make sure at the beginning of every match that you in the pre-game lobby make sure you're getting the kills with the weapon you want to level up as that will count too so make sure you're trying to get a few kills in that pre-game lobby and that will really help again to boost the overall amount of weapon xp you get for your weapon that's pretty much it for battle royale 
now, like I say, make use of any limited time events. Some of them, the, the ones coming this season, hopefully will be quite good. So we'll, we'll see what that's like. But at the moment, it's Vondor Real is probably the best. And then if Plunder comes back, go for that or any kind of other limited time mode for season five. And that's pretty much it for Battle Royale. So now let's talk about DMZ because there are some new tips for DMZ. And then we'll talk about the Weapon XP boost overall. So for DMZ, obviously, as you guys know, this involves sort of spawning in. You want to do some looting, objectives, killing enemies, that kind of thing. And you need to exfil ideally. Now, you can either bring in weapons with you in an insured weapon slot or you can bring in contraband or you can find weapons is up to you now the great thing about dmz is currently in season five it actually seems like the weapon xp rate has been well it seems kind of greatly boosted and um, since the start of season five i don't know if this is intentional or not but it does definitely seem i've noticed this and i know other people have noticed this too that the amount of xp you get for killing enemy ai or bots as you might call them has greatly increased meaning i would say every five to ten kills in dmz will get you another weapon level for your weapon so it's really really quick because there's loads of enemy AI in the game. It's very fast to level up your guns. So basically you want to get as many AI bot kills as you can and remember to restock on ammo regularly. So that's a really important point for season five. So ideally one of your main targets is just trying to get kills. And I know it sounds obvious, but before the weapon XP earn rate from bots wasn't great. So it wasn't worth it. But now it is one of the main focuses. Alongside that, there's a bunch of other things you can do. And here's what you want to do. I would say before we get into it, just bear in mind that it's important to ideally try and upgrade your kind of arsenal to help do better in the game. So make sure you've unlocked the wallet and upgraded it make sure you've got a second and perhaps even a third insured weapon slot just in case if you guys need help with those check out my dmz guides via the card on screen or link in the description just make sure you've got those kind of things just to make your life a little bit easier in game now what you can do for dmz is you want to play with teammates ideally that can help you get a better game try and play it safe don't be you know silly running and gunning if you know you're going to die and also just try and boost the xp earned from the different aspects of the game because that will give you more weapon xp too so this will include that you know if you revive any players that might give you some xp opening supply drops can help killing a enemy air like i said opening loot containers visiting more points of interest on the map doing side missions like uav towers capturing missile sites that kind of thing and finally x filling those can all help as well with your weapon xps and the other thing as well is make sure you're doing contracts they're really really good not just for battle royale but also for dmz so get your kills do all the bonuses like i said and also make sure you're doing contracts i would say the best one is secure supplies because it gives you lots of stuff you know bigger backpacks more armor like two or three play armor vest self revives gas masks all those kind of things which is really important to help you survive longer and get more kills and so on but also you'll get money in the process and also you'll get xp for doing the contract so it's really really important that you do it that's pretty much everything for dmz so let's finally talk about the weapon xp boost in mono for two and warzone so the first thing is double weapon xp weekends as you guys know they're relatively common take advantage of them when they're around i'm sure there'll be one soon especially for the limited time events for you know advertising model for three reveal and so on the next thing is obviously you can earn double weapon xp tokens you can get these from tons of places including free playstation packs the campaign dmz faction missions for you section of the store certain bundles leveling up the battle pass to certain tiers so if you need help leveling up the battle pass check out my guide for that some of the other challenges in the game will do that as well also i'm sure there'll be limited time events like last season where if you logged in on certain days you'd get tokens and things so there'll be things like that soon just look out for weapon xp tokens they're going to be everywhere there's also a few other boosts which you guys might not be thinking of so the first thing is and this is relatively new in one of two in warzone if you use what's called a recommended weapon so infinity ward will say we recommend these top i can't remember how it is i think it's about 20 or 22 weapons or something like that however many weapons it is if you guys are using those recommended weapons which are probably the best weapons or ones that they reckon should be used a bit more if you guys are using one of them and it will have a red banner on it to show it's a recommended weapon you'll get a 20 percent weapon xp bonus literally just for using a specific weapon and you're told to use so if you need to level up any of those now is your chance because you get an extra 20% weapon xp bonus just for using the weapon literally nothing else just using the weapon so 100% jump on that before that goes that's really important also if you're on playstation playing with a teammate will give you a 25% xp and also weapon xp bonus that's really important as well and finally in warzone if you guys own mono for two but you're playing warzone you get an xp and weapon xp bonus at the end of the match if you stay to the end of the match you'll get that bonus applied because you're a premium game owner because you own mono for two and you've got warzone as well so that's why it pays off to play warzone if you've got mono for two because you actually get a bonus for owning the game so that's really important really really helpful and those boosts will definitely make your life a lot lot easier so make sure you're taking full advantage of those these are currently all the fastest ways to level up your guns in modern 2 and warzone if you found these tips helpful leaving a like on the video would be much appreciated so that other people can find this video too be sure to check out my other season 5 guides like leveling up the battle pass dmz guides unlocking weapons like m13b and all the other dlc weapons so feel free to check that out if you guys need and be sure to subscribe by clicking the bell icon to stay up to date with all my latest modern 2 and warzone videos but thank you all so much for watching hope you guys find it useful and i'll see you all on the next one